Welcome to the promotion ceremony for Lieutenant Colonel Stanley Garcia. Go Raiders. My name is Jeff Hickman and I'll be your MC today. I'm honored to be the master of ceremony for this event. Welcome to Battery 407. This facility was a part of a purchase in 1905 with Diamond Head Crater and much of the surrounding 720 acres for a whopping $3,300. Imagine what that price tag would be today. This facility was given to the Hawaii National Guard in the 1950s where it has remained as a part of our organization to this day. Please join me in welcoming Brigadier General Moses Koivi Jr., the Director of the Joint Staff Hawaii National Guard who is presiding over our ceremony today and will be administering the oath of office to our honoree Lieutenant Colonel Garcia. Our guest speakers here today are Sergeant Major Wong, Operations Sergeant, Major for the 103rd Troop Command and Brigadier General Kawivi. Please welcome Command Sergeant Major Thomas Oduardi as well, the 29th IBCT Command Sergeant Major and the J3 Sergeant Major, Hawaii Army National Guard. Please rise for the invocation provided by Lieutenant Colonel Garcia's daughter, Liberty. Please bow your heads. E pulikako, e ko mako makui loko kalani, e ho ano ia koi noa, e hiki mai ko aupuni, e malama ia ko maki maki makahunua ne, e like me ia i malama ia makalani la, e ha avi mai ama ko i ke ia la, i aina mako no ne ia la, e kalamai ho i ama ko i ka mako lavi hala ana, me mako e kalani kapo e lavi hali ka mako. Mai hooku oe ama ko i ka hoo vale vale ia mai. E hoo pa kele no na i ama ko i kino. No ka mea, no ke au puni, a me ka mana, a me ka hoo nani ia maolo aku, a me. All right, thank you, Liberty. Please take your seats. Sharing this special special occasion here with us today on Facebook Live and Microsoft Teams are many, many family and friends, senior officers and fellow service members, and especially the Garcia's Kapulena Loop Gang. Aloha, guys. At this time, we'd like to recognize our distinguished attendees on Facebook Live and Teams. Uh, it is truly appreciated by Lieutenant Colonel Garcia uh, and his family, especially during this COVID environment, to join us today. Thank you. We're pleased to welcome and extend a virtual welcome to Major General Suzanne Veris Lum, Mobilization Assistant to the Commander, U.S. indo -Pecom. Major General Kenneth Hara, Adjutant General, State of Hawaii. Colonel Stephen Logan, Deputy Adjutant General, State of Hawaii. Colonel Tracy Omori, Chief of Staff, Hawaii National Guard. Colonel Pamela Ellison, J-1, Human Resource Officer, Hawaii National Guard. Colonel Tyson Tahara, Chief of Staff, Hawaii Army National Guard. Colonel Barbara Tucker, G-1, Hawaii Army National Guard. Colonel James Barrows, G3, Hawaii Army National Guard. Colonel Michael Tuffer, 29th IBCT Commander, Hawaii Army National Guard. Colonel Mark Young, 298th RTI Commander, Hawaii Army National Guard. Colonel Walter Ross, a Hawaii Med Debt Commander, Hawaii Army National Guard. Command Chief 5, Edwin Perubru, Command Chief Warrant Officer, Hawaii Army National Guard. Command Sergeant Major Dana Wingad, Command Senior Enlisted Leader, Hawaii National Guard. Command Sergeant Major James Jimenez, Command Sergeant Major, Hawaii Army National Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming these distinguished guests. Hopefully all those colonels know how to get online, sir, to, to be with us here today. At this time, we'd like to also extend a special welcome to Lieutenant Colonel Garcia Zohana, his wife, Gail. Daughters, Asia and Liberty. His father, David Garcia, and mother, Nani Garcia. His brother, David Garcia, and brother-in-law, David Williams. And then we got a distinguished second row. We have Sergeant First Class retired Michael Machado from USERPAC Operation Protectorate, Seaburn Branch. Mr. Alan Aquino. Mrs. Siobhan Eason, and a special welcome to Mr. Lester Look. 
All right. You've been seeing uh, Lieutenant Colonel Garcia present Lay to his family and a dozen roses and a diamond ring to his wife. Wow, Gail. All right, let's give him one more round of applause to all the family in front of here today. At this time, I'll share some of Lieutenant Colonel Garcia's biography. For those who may not know much about Lieutenant Garcia's past years of service, he enlisted in the Hawaii Air National Guard in 1984 and was assigned to the 201st Combat Communications Squadron, Hickam Air Force Base, as a power production specialist. Later, he transferred to the Hawaii Army National Guard and obtained his commission in 1991 as a distinguished graduate of the Hawaii Military Academy Officer Candidate School. His first officer assignment was with Company A, 1st Battalion, 299th Infantry in Hanapepe, Hawaii, as a motor platoon leader. He was transferred to Company B, 1st Battalion, 299th Infantry in Kapa'a, Kauai, as a rifle platoon leader until he received his orders to attend the Aviation Officer Basic Course, followed by the Initial Entry Rotary Wing Aviator Course at Fort Rucker, Alabama. He completed flight school and sub was subsequently assigned as the Aviation Maintenance Platoon Leader for Company B, AVM, 193rd Aviation Regiment. He was later assigned as a flight platoon leader for Company C, Medlift, 193rd Aviation Regiment. In 2004, he deployed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, where he served as Executive Officer and Production Control Officer in charge of Company B Avum 193 Aviation in support of both Task Force Diamond Head and Task Force Sabre. Upon his return from deployment in 2005, Lieutenant Colonel Garcia served as a Company Commander for Company B Avum 193 Aviation. Upon completion of that command, Lieutenant Colonel Garcia then took command of Company C Medlift 193 Aviation and successfully navigated the MTO change of the unit to Company B, first of the 171st Aviation. Upon com completion of that command, Lieutenant Garcia then took command of Company B 777 Aviation Support Battalion while also serving as the Chief of Operations for the Hawaii National Guard Counter Drug Program and attending the Command General Staff College Distance Learning Course. Lieutenant Colonel Garcia then served on Title 10 orders as the Chief of Operations for Joint Task Force Homeland Defense, United States Army Pacific. In 2010, he deployed to U.S. Southcom in support of Operation Unified Response. He then served as the J-53 Country Director for U.S. Indo-PACOM while also serving as the S-3 Aviation Officer for 103rd Troop Command. He was then honored to serve as a battalion commander for the Warrior Transition Battalion for Tripler Army Medical Center, Pacific Regional Command. Lieutenant Colonel Garcia then returned to the Hawaii National Guard where he served as the J-5 Strategic Planner for the Hawaii National Guard Joint Staff while attending the U.S. Army War College Distance Education class. Lieutenant Colonel Garcia next served as the Executive Officer for the 103rd Troop Command. He was then assigned as the Hawaii Army National Guard Deputy G-3. Lieutenant Colonel Garcia recently became the J-3 Directorate of Operations and Military Support of the Hawaii, Army, Hawaii National Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Garcia is a graduate of the Kamehameha Schools, Imua. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Occupational Education with a minor in Aviation and Business. His military education includes Aviation Officer Basic Course, Initial Entry Rotary Wing Course, Aviation Officer Advanced Course, CH-47D Aviator Qualification Course, Aviation Maintenance Manager Course, Combined Arms Exercise Course, the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College, Army Medical, uh, Army Medical Department Pre-Command Course, Joint Task Force Commander Course, and a graduate of the U.S. Army War College with a Master's in Strategic Studies. Lieutenant Colonel Garcia's awards and decorations include the Bronze Star Medal, the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the Air Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Joint Service Achievement Medal, Army Achievement Medal, Army Reserve Components Achievement Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Humanitarian Service Medal, Armed Forces Reserve Medal, Joint Meritorious Unit Award, Meritorious Unit Commendation, Army Service Ribbon, Army Overseas Service Ribbon, Air Force Training Ribbon, Army Aviator Badge, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, and he was also awarded the Order of Military Medical Merit. In his civilian life, he was an honor graduate of the Honolulu Police Academy in 1985, in which he retired as a sergeant from the Honolulu Police Department in November of 2018. He has been married to his wife, Gail, for 21 years, and they have two daughters, Asia and Liberty. Asia is a nurse's assistant at Papilani Medical Center, and Liberty just completed her junior year at Pacific University. 
Let's give a round of applause for that outstanding career so far. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Sergeant Major Russell Wong of the 103rd Troop Command for his remarks. Wow, what a bio, huh? Who you should be proud of your dad? Uh, you know, it's a good day today. Brigadier General Kaui, V Command Sergeant Major Jimenez, Command Sergeant Major Oriardi, Senior leaders, officers, and enlisted of the Hawaii Army National Guard, distinguished guests, family and friends, especially on the loop. Welcome, aloha. You know, when I, when I got the call that, well, if I can refer to you as Stan today, sir, you know. Uh, when I got the call that Stan was being promoted, you could imagine that the excitement that rises in, in someone. I was like, wow, it's a, you know, he really deserves this. He really deserves this day, you know. Um, but honestly, I was kind of floored when he asked me to come and, and say a few words for him and, and the family today, and I'm really honored and humbled to be here. Um, but today is a great day, okay? It's a great day for the Hawaii Army National Guard because we as an organization, along with our leaders, our family and friends, we are going to welcome a truly deserving officer, a soldier and a leader to the rank of 06, Hubert Colonel. You know, like I said, I had this long speech and I was trying to figure out what can I say, uh, where do I go with this speech, but you know, everything just was kind of leading to our, our, our friendship and it had nothing relevant for this man today on, on his achievement. So. Whenever you hear achievement, you, you think of, of one's accomplishments. Okay? And when you hear accomplishments, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a rewarding word where, you know, it, it shows you what that individual has done and achieved. Achievement, by definition, it means a thing done successfully, typically by effort, courage, and skill. I've known Stan for over 25 years. Okay? and some change, and I've witnessed firsthand the efforts that he puts in to everything. The amount of energy and time he puts in at the office, you know, to make sure that the mission and the requirements are being met. The amount of energy he puts in while mentoring young officers and enlisted alike. But nothing can compare to the energy and the effort that he puts into his family. You will never find Stan saying, I can't come, or I, I won't be there. He will always be there, you know, no matter what. Stan would drop a dime to stop and move forward his family. Then there's the courage part. I believe the main quality for Stan is his, is his courage. The courage that he became a police officer at a young age shows you that a person like him was willing to put his life on the line every day, like many, so many officers do today. He also joined the military at a very young age, not only to, again, serve his community, but to serve his country. He showed the courage to his soldiers while he was in Afghanistan when he was constantly being sent out to Fire Base Shindad where bullets and danger was just an everyday occurrence. But I really admire his courage for this one thing. It was for the day that your dad didn't beat me up. And this was in Afghanistan, if you don't mind me sharing this little story and how it kind of affected our lives after, after that. Stan and I served in Bravo Company 193rd uh, he was the maintenance platoon leader at the time. I was the maintenance platoon sergeant at the time, fixing helicopters, you know, and whatnot. But we were activated and deployed with the 25th Infantry Division under the Aviation Combat uh, Battalion, and we were st stationed in Kandahar. So you can imagine being 
um, intermixed with the active duty component soldiers where we tend to do things a little bit different, you know. Um, maybe some rules are banned and whatnot in the active component, but in the National Guard, we, we do it the right way. We do things the right way. Stan had an NCO. Um, his assistant, I would say, and this, for the first couple of months, he was kind of like driving the mission, you know, driving the mission, telling, telling me and my platoon what to do. And Stan was, you know, he went along with it because that was his assistant. So finally, I, had, I said, that's enough. I cannot, I cannot take this. Stan is driving me crazy. Okay. So one evening during a meeting, uh, in his office, of course, uh, his assistant started to divvy out the, uh, the taskings for the night, the day. And um, I stood there and I said, no, I'm not doing that. And St <laughs> Stan said, what do you mean you're not doing that? I said, I'm not doing that. We're not doing this, sir. He goes, oh, yes, you will. I said, oh, no, I ain't. <laughs> you should have seen the fire in his eyes. I think I was going to get killed. But anyway, I said, sir, request permission to speak freely. He said, by all means, go, go ahead. Uh, but first, stand fast. He said, everybody, out of the office. Everybody, out of the office, now. I was like, oh my God, here it comes. I'm going to get killed. Nobody walked out. They ran out, okay? They ran out. And then we started going at it. We started throwing F-bombs all over the place. Spit was flying across the room. And I said, oh my God. But I told him, you know, sir, if you really want to learn something, read the books behind your shelf. And more so, I, I, I thought I'd seen my life flash be you know, before my eyes when he was reaching out. But um, I tell him, sir, my main job here is to protect you. you unit alone it's, it's my job to protect you because if we do things unsafe then someone's gonna get hurt let alone someone might get killed and he looked at me and he said you know you know nobody ever talked to me that way and I said sir I'm just being honest because I care about you needless to say after that day after that evening we became inseparable uh, in Afghanistan and I had the greatest joy working for Stan and just hanging out with him, you know, after that. So, watching him grow as an officer and a leader, um, it's, it, it brought me nothing but um, sure happiness for him and whatnot, you know, so he carries on that with Stan. So, and then when going back to the achievement, there's the last part that it's skill. Okay, Stan has that part about him, that skill. The ability of him hearing you and listening, coupled with the sense of compassion and sternness, only, accentuate, only accentuates his leadership qualities that you can clearly see in him today. Yeah. He, also, he also possesses the skillful ability to motivate others when things are up against the wall, but yet he can get things accomplished in the most difficult task. And that what makes Stanley Garcia, Lieutenant Colonel Stanley Garcia, the person he is today. A person who works hard, leads and manages, while providing the best optimal solutions, but yet be a master of psychological warfare. You, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but Stan has that uncanny ability to uh, do that Jedi mind trick on you and stuff, you know, and making you think that you did something that he wanted you to do all along you know, was like, he was like, well, what did you do? Why did this? Why did you do that? It didn't work. Why don't you do it this way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't I do it that way? How come I never think of that? <laughs> but that's then. Okay. So putting those traits together, effort, courage, skill, equals his achievement that is truly relevant for this promotion today. It's no secret that the friendship I share with him uh, is unnoticed. You can catch us on Saturdays at a UH football game with his brother David sometimes and his dad. You, know? you can 
find us golfing once in a while on a free weekend when we get lucky. And maybe sometimes you can catch us with Command Sergeant Major Odiardi doing a Hawaiian AAR somewhere, you know. But again, today is a great day for a son of Hawaii and the Hawaii Army National Guard. Brigadier General Kauivi, I am so excited for you and your staff, Command Sergeant Major Jimenez and Command Sergeant Major Odi. Again, Colonel Garcia will make things happen. Yeah. Command Sergeant Major Odiardi, I'm jealous again because you get to work with him again, as always. No. Gail, Asia, and Liberty, congratulations. Yeah, your father deserves this day. But please know that he, you know, without your love and support, you know, it, it, it helped him through the rough times, okay? And from Linda, Marissa, um, Bear, and Maka, and myself, thank you so much for letting us be a part of your family just as much as you are ours. Okay? And finally, Stan, so much love for you. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your special day. Okay. Love you. Congratulations. Aloha and thank you. All right. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Whenever a Sergeant Major has a story and it entails, can I speak freely? It's either going to be a good one or a scary one, so that was a good one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for our second speaker, please join me in welcoming Brigadier General Moses Kawivi Jr. Mahalo, Jeff. Aloha kako, Ikeela, Ikea Oinala today. Thank you for all of you guys for being here on this uh, special day for uh, Stan right here. As you guys heard uh, through uh, both speeches, actually, from the introduction, as well as from Sergeant Major Wong, um, Stan has accomplished great things throughout his career. Um, he is not here by accident. He is here by design. He is here based off of his character, based off of his hard work, and based off of his uh, dedication and tenacity to stick through all the good, as well as the challenges that he faced within the organization and he's made it through and he's come to this point in his career especially in the National Guard being an active guard reserve to one of the highest pinnacles you can reach as an 06 colonel in the Hawaii National Guard and it has been well earned well deserved Stan has shown to all of us the character that he has and the ability for him to take on such challenges within this organization. We in the Hawaii Army National Guard are unique. In the Hawaii National Guard and Air Guard, we have shown uh, throughout the nation, as well as throughout our specific partners, how important it is to maintain our professionalism and relationships with them in keeping the Pacific Theater secure. And with the job that Stan has right now as the J3, Director of Operations, he is in one of the most critical positions within the Hawaii National Guard to execute the objectives of not only the Hawaii National Guard when it comes to state partnership, as well as with domestic operations and the disasters that come to us specifically with the COVID-19 pandemic that we're facing today. Um, he has reached this point and he has shown that he can do the job that he is in. A little bit about Stan that you might not know, that I know personally and intimately, is his love of comics and comic book heroes. The reason why I know this is because he and I share the same love comics and comic book heroes. In fact, Stan's um, superhero icon is the Incredible Hulk. And for those, for those of you guys wondering, wow, Incredible Hulk, that guy's mean, strong, and he's um, aggressive, and he gets at things, sometimes maybe reckless. But contrary to his icon, 
as the Incredible Hulk, Stan is almost and and through it, what you what you heard from Sergeant Major Wong said, more almost like how he approaches problem as uh, the his alter ego Bruce Banner would would uh, would uh, face it. He's calm. He uh, maintains his thoughts. He doesn't get excited too easily, but when he does, as, as uh, such a major Wong stated, he does turn into the uh, Incredible Hulk. But he has, uh, his approach to uh, the Joint Staff has been a significant help to me. Um, I was the J3 uh, years ago, a few years ago, back in 2014, when Stan came on board and we placed him in my, as my J5 to work with me. And he took on an arduous task of putting together the Hawaii National Guard strategic plan that was to take us from 2015 into 2020. And so Stan did an outstanding job with the guidance from our bosses in taking the thoughts, the objectives, the goals, placing it in a manner that we could uh, codify in, in writing and follow. And I must say that that plan and the objectives that uh, we all work together on, that Stan initiated, did all the hard work, did all the, uh, the details that needed to get done to make sure that everything was lined up in that plan, uh, was completed in 2015 and it will take us to 2020. And I must say that just a few months ago, we looked at the plan and looked at the objectives that we've accomplished over the past five years. And I can say that we've met uh, mostly all of those objectives that we placed in that plan. And it's not because of just because it was written down, because the plan really, as written by Stan and presented, assisted us in understanding where we needed to go and how we needed to get there. And it was through him that we was able to accomplish those things and be where we are today. If you go across the state today and you ask someone about the Hawaii National Guard, um, you'll find that you get favorable comments. Uh, since 2014, when Stan was with us here, uh, we responded to Hurricane Acel on the Big Island. We responded to uh, the Puna lava flow that occurred, uh, not the one that's, that occurred in Elania States, but that too. Um, you know, 2014 to 2020, there's numerous disasters that occurred. And even when Stan was here working here, or even when he was at the Troop Command, um, his expertise and his experience uh, played a tremendous role in making sure that we had the forces we needed to go out and respond to those disasters. And for him to come back full circle become the J3 here to direct those operations and to assist us it was key to making sure that we're successful in, in our future. So Stan, like I said, you're not here by accident, you're here by design. It's all in the, the plan. And we thank you for your service to us. We thank your family for being there to, to take those challenges, sacrifices, those long hours, those days when you hear overtime, so to speak, and uh, sometimes spending long hours into the night just so that Hawaii can stay safe. I myself am happy because you're working for me and makes my job a lot easier, believe it or not. So thank you, Stan. Thank all of you guys. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Thank all of you for, for what you've done. With that, I'll call Jeff. All right, thank you, General Kawivi. We'll now proceed to the pinning ceremony. Can I have the Garcia Ohana please join Lieutenant Colonel Garcia up here in the front? All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated while the orders are published. Publish the orders. Text the order. 
Department of the Army and the Air Force, National Guard Bureau, Washington, D.C., Special Order 187, dated 21 June 2020. Per Title 32, U.S. Code 305 and 307 of Title 32, and the Title 10, U.S.C. 14315, Stanley T. Garcia is extended federal recognition and appointed as a reserve of the Army in the grade of Colonel, effective 1 December 2019, with a date of rank of Colonel as 26 May 2015, by order of the Secretaries of the Army and the Air Force. Signed, Joseph L. Lingell, General, United States Air Force, Chief National Guard Bureau. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Kawivi will now administer the oath of office. of the state of Hawaii. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the Governor of the state of Hawaii. And the Governor of the state of Hawaii. That I make this obligation freely. That I make this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of colonel. The duties of the office of colonel. In the Army National Guard of the State of Hawaii. In the Army National Guard, State of Hawaii. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which am I about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Oh boy. All right. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Jeff, for taking time out of your schedule to be the MC today. You always do such a great job, even though you're a Chiefs fan, but you gave me the Raider Nation Hua. Okay. And Mahalo JP for all of your assistance with taking care of the virtual invitations and all the protocol for today's uh, ceremony. A big mahalo to Colonel Ellison, who's out there hopefully watching for her support and pushing my packet forward. And a special thanks to Sergeant Ching for your technical support and of course, for all the JOC personnel for their support throughout the week. Aloha. We now e komo mai e mahalo nui to my ohana and nohoa in attendance today and for my Ohana and Nohoa, especially my sister Bala, my brother-in-law Shep, my uh, nephew Hunter, 
and my niece, Taylor Ann, who just uh, got commissioned recently into the Air Force. And I think she's going to be going on to a follow-on assignment into the Space Force shortly. And then, of course, to my familia in Texas, and then my Ohana out, way outside at the west side in Nanakuli Ea. And then, of course, to the senior officers and fellow warriors on Facebook Live. Today is a culmination of a long journey of hard work, perseverance, faith, and blessings of being promoted to colonel. The journey was fraught with many roadblocks and along the way, but also with great opportunities that prepared me to be a colonel in the Hawaii Army National Guard today. My destiny to finally become a colonel is not something unexpected because I realized all the blessings that guided me throughout my career was indicative of my incredible ohana and great parents that I have, who raised us not only to work hard, but to know the meaning and value of working hard to achieve our goals. I'm so happy that my parents are able to make it today, especially during this COVID time. And I'm also happy that my brother Dave, who is also able to make it here today. Mahalo mom and dad and Dave. I'm also blessed to have two wonderful daughters. My oldest daughter, Aja, who amazes me every day as she works tirelessly as a nurse's assistant at Kapiolani Medical Center in the Children's Oncology Department. You are truly amazing and inspiring. And though we're all suffering through these turbulent times of COVID, I have found the blessings through these tough times as my youngest daughter, Liberty, is on an extended break after her junior year at Pacific University in Oregon and is now safely home with Gail and I. She also amazes me with her academic performance and her continued love of our Hawaiian heritage as a president of University's Hawaiian Club, Nahomana o Hawaii. Mahalo to my other brother, David Williams, for taking time off today to be here. I really appreciate it. Mahalo to Alan, my, my high school classmate who came from Washington, and then our dear friend Siobhan for being here today for all that you do for us. And then my brother from another, Mike Machado. Thank you for being here today. I believe the path to become a colonel in the harangue and the path that I took was primarily based on three things. First, it's your team. As I mentioned, you can never complete or reach your goals without the par partnership of your ohana, nohoa, peers, mentors, and especially those who serve with you. Second, you must seek out and take advantage of opportunities, not only within the harangue, but also outside of harangue. You need to get comfortable outside of your comfort zone and flourish wherever your battle space is established. Third is locating the defining characteristics of caring about others more than you care about yourself. If you have an attitude of selfless service, you then have a heart and desire that want to help and encourage other people. Historically and or traditionally, when an officer is promoted, he or she usually begins by giving thanks to the senior officers who have assisted, guided, and mentored them throughout their careers. I will definitely get to that in a minute, but for me, I want to start by giving my thanks to the entire Army National Guard Enlisted Corps. I have had the honor and privilege to work with the finest NCOs throughout my career. Each of them have helped shape my career and made me the officer I am today. I had the pleasure of serving with the best of the best, such as Staff Sergeant Tumamao, Makugai, Lumho, Almos, Fajal Tina, Sergeant First Class Corey Lum, Brad Rivera, Eugene Chang, Galdoramo, Eric Simpson, Chris Hostomo, Mitsui, Cesar Ramirez, Paul Higa, Tumpop, Levy, and Kapili, Master Sergeant Manez, Sagaisai, Mackinac, Magaro and Gallegos, and just to name a few. I could literally go on for hours acknowledging all the NCOs past and present, so if I did not mention your name, please know that all of you have had a touch point in my promotion today. I would like to especially thank my first Command Sergeant Major, who served with me at the Warrior Transition Battalion, Command Sergeant Major Bob Zavala, hopefully he's on Facebook. The WTB was a very challenging but most rewarding command that I had the honor to lead. As a command team, I could not have asked for a better CSM, so hopefully he is watching on Facebook and is able to hear the gratitude I have for being able to serve with him. I would also like to express my thanks to Command Sergeant Major Odardi. I've been blessed to have served with him at Troop Command and now at the Joint Staff. Odie was the right CSM at the right time for Troop Command. Though at his initial counseling, I believe I shocked him when I told him, before you hear any rumors, I want you to hear from me. I did not want you here. <laughs> While he sat in the chair with that look that said, but I didn't do anything, I then, I then explained to him that due to no fault of his own, by being the IDT CSM and a full-time Sergeant Major of Operations, he was potentially taking away an opportunity for someone else to be promoted or move up. 
then why he's he was still in a shock I told him now that you're here here's my expectations and I can honestly tell tell you that he met every expectation and more mahalo Odi, for all that you do and as you heard Sergeant Major Wong come up here today most of you may know the history between myself and Sergeant Major Wong I stand before you today in no small part because of the bond that we share that we have forged through blood, sweat, and tears. He was my first first sergeant, and like CSM Odie, Wongi was the right first sergeant at the right time for then Charlie 193rd Aviation. When we took command, we had the daunting task of res resurrecting the company, which suffered the loss of both aviators and maintainers after the unit's first deployment. We also took command during the reorganization of Army Aviation, in which we were tasked to reset all 12 CH-47 airframes. During the first year of our command, we were able to recruit and send three lieutenants, four warrant officer candidates to flight school, as well as recruit one W-1 interstate transfer. And let me tell you, for those in the recruiting world, you know that that was no small feat. Through Wongi's efforts and expertise to reset all of our 47s, it, it proved to be very successful. As I mentioned before, our bond, it has grown over the years, and it continues to flourish through our children as we saw and continue to see our children go off to the same university and the graduation of two of our keikis from Pacific University. Mahalo Wongi for your mentorship, counsel, kind words today, and I'll give you the $20 later, and most of all, your friendship. I would also like to thank another group of individuals that I had the honor of serving and flying with, our Warrant Officer Corps. I learned rather quickly these technical experts are among the very best Army aviators you will ever find. It was an honor serving with Chief Pelakai, Samara Diaz, Frischel, Kaloy, Janos, Bags, Umeda, Cantu, Sharky, and many others. My special thanks, though, is to CW3 retired Jeff Abair, who did the flyby when we first started this ceremony. During the height of the counter drug program, Jeff commanded the Debt 55 raid program. If I needed something done, whether it was collaborating with all law enforcement agencies or something really small like transporting our OH-58 and D-8 aircraft on a, CH, on a C-17 to support Guam's eradication, he made it happen. I also had the privilege of working with him at HPD, where he currently is flying for HPD as we speak. So mahalo, Jeff, for all that you did for the Harang and for the counter drug program. I would also like to say thank you to the XOs, commanders, and staff that I had the honor of serving with throughout my career. Mahalo to Lieutenant Colonel Graff, Major Garvin, Bello, Van Leeuwen, and Lacau from the WTB. A special mahalo to my medical staff at the WTB who worked tirelessly to take care of our soldiers, as well as the squad, leader, squad leaders, platoon sergeants, and first sergeants. I would like to thank Lieutenant Colonel Tunpop, Cadiz, Wandasan, Tolentino, Kalama, Kahano, Suha, Torres, Ishikawa, Spencer, Fiafiame, Blanchard, Major Hayes, Higlin, Calvin, Kim, and Ano, and many more for their support throughout the years. But please know if I did not mention you in, in, today, in no way does it diminish the gratitude that I have for each of you. Now, during my tenure with the Honolulu Police Department, I had the honor of working with the Honorable Judge Ed Kubel. I met Judge Kubel back in 1986 as he was a lead prosecutor for one of my first narcotics cases. Our paths crossed again when Judge Kubo was a state attorney's general and I was running operations for counter drug. Several years later, as a WTB commander, I initiated the Wounded Warrior Regatta as part of the new adaptive reconditioning program for soldiers in transition. I immediately reached out to Judge Kubo, Gervin Miyamoto, General Retired Richardson, Mwinki Anat, Hui Nalu, Outrigger Canoe Club, and my brother who helped out and, was, and others who have graciously supported the event. I'm happy to see how much it has grown and I believe Judge Kubo still supports the event today. So mahalo Judge Kubo and for your support and friendship. Before I move on to expressing my thanks to some of the senior officers who have been influential throughout my career, I wanted to take the time to give a special thanks to Mr. Lester Luke. Almost seven years ago, when I became the J-5, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Luke. We would have brief conversations when he would stop by my office. I always appreciated his hard work and dedication in taking care of our offices and the job. It was during our conversations when Lester told me he hoped that one day I would be promoted to Colonel. Before I departed the Joint Staff to my next assignment, 103rd Troop Command, Lester handed me a set of Colonel ranks. 
right here. I kept it on my desk as a reminder to continue to push forward and work hard so that hopefully someday I may earn the right to wear the rank of Colonel. So I will never forget your support, encouragement, and which is why I'm honored and happy that you were able to make it today. Thank you, Leslie. Though my roots are ingrained in aviation, I had the opportunity to work with several colonels throughout the harangue. To my now fellow colonels, I say mahalo for your support, and I look forward to continue working with you. To those who have since retired, mahalo for all of your support throughout the years. Now, throughout my career, there have been several senior officers who have been instrumental in shaping my path. I would like to start off by thanking a few of the senior officers, and if I don't mention you, please know that all of you have been instrumental in your own way. First, I'd like to say mahalo to Major General Retired Gary Hara for providing me the opportunity, opportunity to command both the flight company and the agent. And then when I was working as a country desk officer at U.S. Indo-PACOM, Major Hara selected me for battalion command of the Warrior Transition Battalion. I truly appreciate the confidence that you had in me and the honor of command that you provided for me. Mahalo, sir. Mahalo to Major General Retired Joe Logan for providing me the opportunity to run operations for counter drug program. The counter drug program afforded me the opportunity to move on to assignments at Mr. Pack and U.S. Indo-PACOM. After a few Title 10 ADOS tours and battalion command, I was fortunate to be selected as a Hing J-5. Major General Logan was also very supportive and always took the time to provide mentorship to me. Mahalo, sir, for providing me the opportunity to attend War College. And then last year, November, Major General Logan selected me to be the Hing J-3, which is why I'm here today. Mahalo, sir, for the great opportunity. With regards to assignments at USERPAC, I would like to say a mahalo to Colonel Retired Ed Toy. Colonel Toy selected me to run operations for a Joint Task Force Homeland Defense. It was my first time working at the joint level. That assignment assisted with my next selection to be Country Desk Officer at US Indo-PACOM. It was also at JTFHD where I had the honor <coughs> of reconnecting with a college classmate of mine, Sergeant First Class Retired Mike Machado. We had many adventures traveling throughout the U.S. Indo-PACOM's JOA. Mike currently works at USERPAC, C. Bernie Branch, and still supports the harangue to this day. Mahalo Mike for dragging me around the JOA and always beating me and Master Sergeant Price in the Cantos at Guam. Mahalo Nui to Major General Susie Verislam, who hopefully is watching on Facebook. I had the distinct pleasure of working with Major General Verislam when she was the J2. I will never forget and I truly appreciate her taking the time to be my reader when I was in War College. See, during War College, we have to prepare several papers. Major General Verislam just became the Chief of the Joint Staff, and though she was super busy, she still took the time to review my papers and provide her assessments. Even when she got promoted to Brigadier General and assigned to U.S. Indo-PACOM, she still took the time to be my reader. That is a testament of her character and leadership. Mahalo Nui, ma'am, for everything that you've done. And mahalo to Brigadier General Moses Kawidi. He stole some of my thunder, but I'm still read this because I planned on this. <laughs> when I was selected as a J-5, and a few months later, uh, later General Kawidi was selected to be the J-3. That was the first opportunity I had to serve with General Kawidi. It was at that point that I realized how fortunate I was to have the opportunity to serve with a true professional and outstanding leader. General Kawidi has the innate ability to make everyone feel comfortable and provide an atmosphere conducive for officers to learn their particular trade craft, thus becoming better officers. And as General Koibi said, as a kid growing up, I immersed myself in comic books, even though my dad gave some of them away. <laughs> many, many Marvel comics. Just when I thought I had a good grasp on all things Marvel's related, I quickly discovered General Koibi already had all the affinity stones. <laughs> So for those of you who watch the Avengers, you know exactly what I'm meaning. meaning. And for those of you who have the pleasure of working with General Koivi, know his superpowers of knowing every character and timeline of the Marvel Universe. Sir, it is truly an honor and privilege to be working with you once again. And mahalo, sir, for your mentorship and your friendship. I have spoken. In closing, I have told her privately, but more so now, I want my beautiful queen to hear me express it publicly. I would not be standing here today if it wasn't for your unwavering and understanding and support. Today is, much, is as much about you as it is me. The life challenges that you face, that we face, has never deterred you from your support of me and the harangue. 
The sacrifices you have made have never gone unnoticed by me. And I appreciate all that you have done for our shared blessings of today's promotion. I love and salute you. Finally, from the immortal words of Dr. Strange, faith is my sword, truth is my shield, knowledge is my armor. Mahalo nui and aloha. attending today's ceremony.